reliability engineers, what they do is they're the ones that break down uh, the makeup of equipment. Uh, they design reliability into it when they're in, in installing a project. You want that piece to go in, you want to look at every aspect of it. Is it going to work when we need it to, how we need it to, and all that. So they're the ones that are, that are thinking ahead of the curve all the time. Uh, they're the ones that are going to diagnose your root cause analysis uh, more than anybody else. They're the ones that own that process usually. So they're taking a tradesman into the next phase is what that is, a reliability engineer. And, and there are uh, certifications for that. There's uh, certified reliability leaders, which is a great position for a, a tradesman to get into. That brings them into the next phase. And usually in, in the trades, you have people that want to go into predictive maintenance. So you have vibration analysts, thermographers, uh, ultrasound. Those people are the ones that are, have a keen interest in, in understanding the fundamentals of machinery. So they want to dial into it and, and get to root cause before it comes. They want to predict the problem before it comes. And those are the people that depend on reliability engineering to make sure the equipment's uh, built properly, installed properly for that. The typical reliability engineer has uh, no set background in either a trade or uh, mechanical or electrical engineering. It's, it came about a few years ago as a separate avenue um, of engineering. So you see graduates come out of, out of school with reliability engineering that have never held a tool. Uh, not to say that literally, but they're not a tradesman. And they make uh, very good reliability engineers. I've seen tradesmen go back, uh, you know, after years of being in the trade, become an awesome reliability engineer. So it's kind of an avenue that takes them both. Uh, and it's a good marriage of, of, you know, knowledge and mechanical aptitude, so to speak. <laughs>